Hi everyone, welcome to Max Easy Lessons once more. I know this is very close to the exam, it's getting it very close, but here is a simple reminder, right? I hope this helps you. So there are 20 poems, yes, and 20 poems can be quite a lot to memorize and to study the themes for, but guess what? Here is something that is making it simpler, I think. I hope so, and I hope it does help you. Thank you so much for sticking around and for watching these videos. I apologize for not having more, but... Um, time constraint all right so good luck tomorrow in your exams and i wish you all the best and i do hope that you will simply do your best you will basically if you run into trouble people write your way out of the exams <laughs> all right so here is what let's just look at the themes in the csec for the csec poems all right there is childhood in dreaming black boy and this is by james berry now don't forget you have to remember even the surnames of these poets all right so a dreaming black boy childhood of course we learn about um the persona's childhood growing up and the fact that he faced racial discrimination from his teacher when he was in class once upon a time there is also a childhood um, this poem is by okara and from this poem we learn that the father is reflecting on his life as a child and how things have changed Mervyn Morris, and that is a spelling error, people. It's M O R R I S. I apologize for that. Mervyn Morris, little boy is crying. It is also another where there is a little boy who um, his father disciplines him and he cries away because he actually wants to play in the rain. And that's almost, that's for childhood. Let's go into prejudice, race relations, racial discrimination. All right, anything to do with the racism, color. Um, ethnic background etc there is dreaming black boy by james berry there is theme for english b by langston hughes there is a stone's throw by elma mitchell there is test match sabina park by stuart brown dreaming black boy yes it's the color of his skin that allows him to allows the poem to fall under this category theme for english b well all the stories of racism or racial discrimination or race relations and i prefer to call it race relations people because he was not truly discriminated against in the, 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 the poem, but it was in his thoughts that these events that surrounded the whole issue of race at the time would have affected his piece of writing. We did not see where his professor had an issue with him being black or colored, but we realized that it was the persona who assumed that the professor would have had a problem. In A Stone's Throw, there is discrimination, not of race, not of um, color, whatever. It is gender discrimination here. And the woman is thrown and religious too because she is not of the Pharisees and therefore the Pharisees believed that they could destroy her with stones. There is Tess Match Savannah Park and of course that is one that has race relations as well. And this is Stuart Brown's, um, this is Stuart Brown's poem. It deals with the people, the black people who are watching the match against against England and it further shows how a white person views the match against the black versus how the way that the blacks view the matches the match against the whites. Let's move into the natural world or the physical environment. We look at God's grandeur, Gerard Manley Hopkins. It is about the destruction of the natural environment and God's ability to replenish the earth orchids again it's about the durability of the plant that stands against the 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 whole idea of not being watered not being treated properly and so here's the simmons mcdonald's persona talks about the orchids here we have south by kamar brathwaite this is of course talking about a man from the west indies region yes the south who has journeyed to the north and he compares what life is like in the north against what is like in the south his home he's nostalgic in so many ways because the persona wants to return home sonnets composed upon westminster bridge by william wordsworth is one of the older ones yes but it is also interesting if you are familiar with the industrial revolution or with the industry and the factories and all of that you will understand the comparison that he makes of and the personification that he uses of england london being quiet and still in the morning when then that would have changed by daybreak and we would have seen how the industrial revolution has changed this an african thunderstorm is by david rubadiri this one talks about it is loaded yes the literal meaning is that a thunderstorm is coming and we all know what a thunderstorm is but from a figurative perspective there is so much more to this poem 
all right there is bird shooting season the men go out olive seniors poem here the persona talks about the men going out to shoot birds the women's responses to the tasks that their husbands have set out to do let's go quickly into appearance versus reality once upon a time gabriel okara once more he talks about how people appear to be happy to see you how people appear to be pleased at your presence but in fact the reality is that they are not happy to have you around and so he compares them with similes yes and he talks about the snake fangs and protruding behind the smile etc Dulce et decorum est wilfred owens is one of my favorites two people it is about war the appearance is that war is glorious the reality is that war creates serious death, gruesome death for people who are in war. Stuart Brown's West Indies, USA, yes. Their parents of Puerto Rico being a very rich Caribbean island because it is a part of the United States. But the reality is that it is not. It is just as poverty stricken as the rest of them. Yes, it is also poor. A stone's throw, Elma Mitchell. All right, let's do Elma Mitchell here. In a stone's throw, it's really towards the religion, yes. The Pharisees, the person who is doing the stoning, the stone, the, the, the persona is stoning the woman based on his religious beliefs. But at the same time, the, re the reality is that he revels, he enjoys the fact that even though he is a Christian, he is really a hypocrite because he is stoning a woman because she has sinned and yet he is committing a sin as well. My parents is Stephen Spender. Let's go right into that one. Their parents is that the boys are having a good time. The person thinks that they're having a good time. But the reality is that these boys actually envy him for his lifestyle. In Miro, a parents versus reality, the woman appears to want to have a younger life. But the reality is that she is not as young as she thinks she is. And so Sylvia Platt's poem talks to about a parents versus reality. For dreams and aspirations, we have Dreaming Black Boy by James Berry, we have South by Kamal Brathwaite, we have The Woman Speaks to the Man Who Has Employed Her Son by Lorna Goodison, and we have Mirror Again by Sylvia Plath. All of these personas in these poems have dreams towards one thing or another. The black boy, dreaming black boy, the persona wants to achieve and to, to be recognized for its achievements. In South, the dream is to go back home to the South where life is different. The woman speaks to the man who has employed her son. The dream and aspiration is that her son would not end up dead and that, you know, he would have had a better life instead of becoming a hired gun. In Mirror, the woman dreams that she would stay young forever, but the reality is that she doesn't. Human Cruelty. This is The Dark Time I Love by Martin Carter. There is Dulce et Decorum Est, Wilfred Owens, and A Stone's Throw by Elma Mitchell. Human Cruelty, of course, in the first two, there is war. And of course, we all know that war takes on a new angle, and well, not a new angle, an old angle of cruelty. A Stone's Throw, the cruelty here is that the woman is being stoned, and that is done by other humans. Power and Powerlessness, Dreaming Black Boy, James Berry once more. The boy is powerless, the, the persona is powerless to change his childhood at that point because he has to accept the way the teacher teaches and the way the teacher ignores him. But he will hold power because he has the dream to be like other black greats who were of his time. This is the dark time, my love. There is power and powerlessness as is presented by Martin Carter. War and the invasion of the British in British Guyana at the time. These people were powerless against the... the the Europeans who came there, and the Europeans held their power over them, hence the war. Theme for English B, power and powerlessness. We see that the persona struggles against a white system to the point where he is so afraid to talk about himself as a black or a colored individual. In a stone's throw, Elma Mitchell once more. Oh, and theme for English B is by Langston Hughes. Um, a Stone's Throw by Elman Mitchell, the woman is powerless against the men who are stoning her, but the guru, the preacher man, exerts his power when he turns their eyes upon themselves. In Little Boy Crying by Mervyn Morris, the little boy is powerless against his father as he cannot get his own way in terms of running and playing in the rain. Superstition in Old Hig, and some people may not see it in, in Mirror, yes, but it is there. Superstition in Old Hig by Mark McWatt, of course, the folklore. In Mirror, superstition is that the mirror can tell her what she wants to know, but does it truly do that? It tells her what is actually there. Identity. Let's go with identity. In Once Upon a Time by Gabriel O'Cara, Dreaming Black Boy by James Berry, theme for English B, Langston Hughes, and Old Hig, Mark McWatt. 
patriotism and nationalism that is the love of one's country this is the dark time i love martin carter it is a war poem so too is dulce et decorum est and so there is no need to question the level of patriotism these people love their country it is a constant image of your face by dennis brutus is also one for patriotism and nationalism because he is left with a choice between his wife or his love and his country test match for sabina park stuart brown the locals the coloreds are devoted to their country so too is the white the white person who is there and so each of them will see the beauty of the side that they are supporting faith in god and religion there is God's grandeur and the faith that God will replenish the earth even though mankind destroys it. This is by Gerard Manley Hopkins. A stone throw, Elma Mitchell, we see the guru who brings about the faith. The woman has faith that she will be saved and she will be protected. Education and learning, we see Once Upon a Time by Gabriel O'Carroll, Dreaming Black Boy, James Berry, theme for English B. Langston Hughes. Education and learning in Gabriel O'Carr's poem is one where it's not a formal institution where he goes to a school, right? But he learns lessons from life and so he is educated and he learns about the way people are. Dreaming Black Boy, it's formal, yes. Theme for English B, it's a formal school setting as well. And we do understand that one. Or do I have to go into that one? No. All right, because this is very long. Warfare and international conflict, again, we talk about war, we talk about Dulce and Decorum Est by Wilfred Owens, we talk about This is the Dark Time My Love by Martin Carter. These are war poems, these are international con conflicts because they exist between the natives and an international group. Love and family relationship, we see this in Once Upon a Time by Gabriel O'Cara. The woman speaks to the man who has employed her son, Lorne Goodison, and it is the constant image of your face. These people have love for their families. These people have love towards each other. These people have love towards people. And all of these will have largely similarities, but it's just that they are presented in different ways. There is Injustice in a Stone's Throw by Elma Mitchell and Dreaming Black Boy by James Berry. Both personas are treated unfairly by others in the society, and therefore they have to contend with the injustice. Colonialism refers to a power or a group or a country coming into another country to take over. West Indies, USA, the colonial powers would be the United States coming over and colonizing the, the territories, in fact, taking Puerto Rico as one of their own. Stuart Brown brings this across quite vividly in his poem here. This is a dark time I love, Martin Carter. He speaks about the, the invasion of the British troops in British Guyana at a time when war knew no boundaries, basically. And so European powers, strong powers, were taking control of Caribbean islands. Contemplation upon, and memories. We definitely, look at, we definitely look at Once Upon a Time Here by Gabriel O'Cara, theme for English B and Langston Hughes, by Langston Hughes, sorry, Orchids by Hazel Simmons MacDonald and South by Edward Brathwaite. These people are reflecting on things that have happened once upon a time. The persona reflects on his life. Theme for English B, the persona reflects on the treatment of black people at the time. Am I going too fast, people? <laughs> I am sorry if I am. Theme for English B, the persona reflects on his life as a colored person and the way society treats him. Orchids, the woman also reflects on life and she likens her life and life itself to that of the orchid that does not die. South, he has memories of his homeland, the persona, yes, and he wants to go back. And then there is the loss of innocence, dreaming black boy and once upon a time. These people are forced, these personas, sorry, are forced into the reality of life. And so they have lost their innocence. They have lost their hope. They have lost whatever hope would have been left of seeing the world and the society as one that is accepting. In Once Upon a Time, he has lost his innocence because he has seen that the society holds no boundaries about being hypocritical. And therefore, he believed, the persona believed, that life would have been different, but sadly, it was not. All right, alienation is test match Sabina Park, Stuart Brown. Oh, of course, yes, the colored people made the white person feel alienated, separated from their culture, yes. Dreaming black boy, definitely alienation. The boy is separated from the whites. These are basically connected to the alienation is as a result of race relations that existed in the society at the time, the colored versus the whites. And death. 
Of course, it's in the war, the war poem Dulce et Decorum Est by Wilfred Owens, and the woman speaks to the man who has employed her son in law at Gunnison. Now, you may have a problem with that second one in death. The truth is that the woman speaks quite clearly towards death and what would happen as a result of things happening the son becoming a hired gun, the man giving him a whole gun for himself, etc. There is the death there and how she plans to deal with this death.